In this former airplane hangar, we created the world's best sports laboratory. A rocket high-tech facility with one purpose, to analyze the best athletes in the world. And with our new cutting edge mobile laboratory, the world is now our testing ground. We've raised the bar to push the limits of human performance. We're bigger and better than ever before. This is Sports Science. uniform or just exercise clothes. But the gear you wear is actually a second skin, and it's a multi-billion dollar industry. But does it really work? When it comes to athletic performance, can what you wear really affect how well you do? Nowadays, most athletic clothing is focused on getting rid of sweat. The buzzword is wicking using fabric that moves sweat away from the body to keep us dry. But could that actually be the wrong way to deal with sweat? To find out, we jumped over the pond to visit a laboratory in Switzerland. AMPA is an independent facility that tests materials, textiles, and technologies for clients like the Swiss military. Here in this lab, they're testing clothing made by a company called X-Bionic. The makers of X-Bionic clothes believe there's a better way to design athletic apparel, a way to turn sweat into energy. If you just ask yourself the question, why do we sweat? And what sense does it make to take the sweat away from the body? Then we wouldn't sweat, you know, the evolution would have developed a human being without sweating. To examine the evolution of sporting apparel, sports science host John Brinkus will begin the test wearing regular workout gear. He'll go for a run on the treadmill in this one-of-a-kind climate chamber. So I'm wearing just a normal workout shirt, the kind that everybody wears in the gym. Now I'm gonna run in 125 degree heat. Before he starts his workout, John will swallow a high-tech pill. This is actually a wireless sensor. I'm gonna take my thermometer pill so that we can monitor my core body temperature. While the temperature we feel on the outside, on our skin, is important, it's the body's core temperature, deep inside, around the heart and organs. That's critical. If the body core temperature goes above 40 degrees Celsius, at one stage you will not be able to control your muscles uh, anymore or it can be even more dangerous and go to a heart attack or a complete collapse of the, of the whole thermoregulation system. Let's fire this up. Let's do it. It's time to find out how bad of an idea this actually is. Oh my God, that's hot. I feel like I could cook something right here. The climate chamber immediately climbs to a scorching 125 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hot, very hot. The ingestible sensor indicates that John's core temperature is spiking quickly. In only seven minutes, climbing from 98 to over 100 degrees and rising. I've only been running for a, a few minutes. I feel like I've been running for hours. I've never run in heat like this. John's clothing is wicking the sweat away from his torso. So it evaporates not on his skin, but on the outside of his shirt. Our thermal imaging camera reveals that it's not helping his body maintain thermal regulation. I'm on minute 12. I don't know how much longer I can make it. 
John's core temperature is now over 102 degrees. If it climbs above 104 degrees, John could suffer heat stroke, kidney damage, and even brain damage. I don't know how much longer I can go. Oh, I'm really dizzy. With less sweat left on his body to evaporate, John's feeling weak because his body is using all of its resources just to cool down. Very simply, our body only can perform with a core temperature of 37 centigrade. And he takes nearly all his energy to keep this regulation. After only 14 minutes on the treadmill, in 125 degree heat, disaster strikes. my footing, I think. Can we stop for a second? <sighs> the sensors inside John's body indicate that his core temperature peaked at a dangerous 104 degrees. In less than 20 minutes, he lost over a quart of sweat and became seriously dehydrated. So could John's clothes have actually contributed to his collapse? The makers of X-Bionic Sporting Gear believe that moisture wicking, moving sweat away from the skin, actually works against our body's built-in cooling system. You will produce more sweat uh, because the, the body is trying to fight against uh, this overheating. And if the, the sweat uh, cannot evaporate properly because you're wearing the, the wrong clothing, then it will produce more and more and more and more. We call that a vicious circle that uh, then at the end uh, will lead to a heat stroke, uh, like a heart attack. To test the theories at work in X-Bionic's revolutionary clothing system, we enlisted a man who has pushed the limits of human performance to unbelievable extremes. World record holding ultra triathlete, Vincenzo Catalano. An Ironman triathlon is an intense endurance event. A 2.4 mile swim, followed by a 112 mile bike ride, and then a full 26 mile marathon. Vincenzo specializes in ultra triathlons. Double or triple those distances. This Italian has run, biked, and swum more competitive miles than any human alive. I have run uh, 14 double Ironman, uh, eight triple Ironmans, uh, one quinto Ironman, and four times I ran uh, a deca Ironman. That is the distance of uh, Ironman multiplied by 10, the longest distance ever done in ultra triathlon history. Vincenzo, what we're going to do is we're going to put you into the climate chamber. And we're going to raise the temperature to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is hot. What we want to see is how the X-Bionic clothing regulates your body temperature. But what I have is a sensor that you're going to swallow. Yes. And we're going to be able to see wirelessly what your core body temperature is yes. at every moment. OK. All right? Here we go. OK. With this X-Bionic gear on and the internal sensor in place, it's time to turn up the heat on our Italian superstar. How will Vincenzo handle the searing heat? Could this clothing actually keep his core temperature down? And in the process, turn his sweat into energy? Find out when Sports Science continues.